So, my mum did attend church with us very young, up to about five years old or so. Um, and then we, we stopped going. But um, my uncle, he's been faithfully serving the Lord for over 20 years now. And he's been a huge part of my journey so far. And um, why I'm standing before you pretty much. Um, on the other side, my dad was uh, what's called in New Zealand as an All Black. So uh, the national sport in New Zealand is rugby. And uh, he represented New Zealand in rugby. So it was... <clears throat> it's a big deal in New Zealand. It's like a childhood dream, really, to be an All Black. And, um, yeah, my father was lucky enough to represent New Zealand. So throughout my childhood, it was it was all rugby, you know, it was uh, sport. Um, and, um, you know, that's what I said to myself when I was younger, is um, that I'll just I'll play out my career, play rugby. Um, but, uh, you know, the Lord and the Sabbath was in the back of my head, and... That was my plan to just play rugby and you know I worship God at the end of my career and do good. But uh, God had other plans for me. Uh, so yeah, there I was basically. Um, I was 19 when I first started training in my first professional team, and um, so I played in my first professional tournament in Hong Kong. And um, that year, my there was a, I had a season-ending um, injury. I tore my ACL, and so there I was out of the squad, and um, you know I didn't I didn't stop playing though. I worked really hard to get back into the squad two years later, and I did in 2016. And then another series of injuries led me out of the squad until two years later I worked my way back in again, which was last year 2018, and that year I suffered two major injuries. I had knee surgery and ankle surgery. And during that time is when, you know, I really started wondering, what what am I going to do now? Like, uh, I had all this time on my hands. I couldn't walk for three months, and I suppose I was weak at that time. I was um, I was bored first off. I was I'm very active as a person. I'm a carpenter as well, so I'm always on my feet. You know, I love running as fast as I can and jumping in as high as I can, and so that was uh, that was a weakness for me and. Um, I just remember watching something on YouTube about uh, Christian churches or something like that being destroyed in China, and um, I just had my I had a thought like, man, maybe maybe Jesus is coming again. I don't know. And so I started uh, reading some things, and um, as I read more and more, I had more questions. And praise the Lord, uh, I had my uncle to answer my questions. So he actually gave me. Uh, he said, "Look, if you're interested, you should." Start reading the Great Controversy. So I started reading that a few chapters, um, as well as started reading the Bible. And so, um, as I grew more and more with God, I also started getting better. Uh, my legs were healing. So it, I eventually came to a point where I had God and I had rugby. You know, and um, this was all this year pretty much. And so. Um, I couldn't play in New Zealand because they play on Saturday, and so I, I made that decision um, that I wasn't going to play in New Zealand, But I, so I looked overseas, and so this contract came up to play in Bahrain, which, as you don't know, is in the Middle East, and they play in Dubai and Qatar, a lot of traveling. Um, it was a good contract, and so um, that was what I was praying for. I was praying that I could still, you know, serve God and play rugby. Um, <coughs> I still love rugby now, so it's um, still close to me. So God presented me this contract pretty much. And so they play on Friday, Friday afternoon, Friday night in uh, this league. And so this was, in truth, it was a test really because half the games were after Sabbath, half the games were before. And so it was like God would say to me really like, are you going to be a half Christian or a full devoted Christian? And so... Um, Actually, before I left, I signed the contract, and um, I just, knowing that I'd have to play on the Sabbath, and so I was like, oh. I was like, oh, don't worry about it, I'll just, I'll just pray, and uh, you know, God will, God will do something for me, and so um, I was doing a little traveling before I landed in, before I was set to go to Bahrain, and so um, 
I was two days from flying out, and um, I think I, I saw this article that um, Brother Luke presented, and I was like, that was, it was clear to me I had to give it up, really. And after consulting my uncle, he's like, uh, it was so it was clear I did have to give it up. So I did, and um, friends, my father was so mad at me. He um, he didn't want to speak to me ever again. He he pretty much said it dead to me. Uh, he said, "Don't come to my house. I'll trespass you. Uh, don't make contact with me." Um, and so uh, I had to fly back to New Zealand. Um, pretty much not having uh, anything to do, and so uh, this. This opportunity came up to come here, and so um, this uh, I'm playing here now for Kalani, but uh, it's at a very low level. It's, it's uh, I'm not getting paid. The job I have to work I had to work in was uh, it was over 50 hours a week for less money than what I was doing back home, and so um, I said to myself, if this is what I have to do to serve the Lord, uh, so be it, I suppose. And so. Um, I, t I took this up. Uh, there were other offers to play here, obviously, with very good money, um, but all on the Sabbath. So basically, here I was flying over here, and uh, my dad forgave me, by the way. Praise the Lord for that. But um, here I was. Uh, here, um, there I was, I could say, really in his hand. And so. Uh, I came here not knowing what lay ahead of me. That was, the rugby was worse than I thought, and the job was even worse than I thought again. So uh, I'm embarrassed to say I really doubted um, God at that point. You know, I was like, man, I gave up that. I gave up more than one contract, really, to just keep the Sabbath. And um, here I am working really hard. Uh, over It was like 55 hours a week for a very small amount of money playing terrible rugby, <laughs> um, and they wanted me to coach as well, so I was like, I was like man, this, I, was, I, was, I was really struggling, and, um, and it was really, uh, I have to say, the church family here that's helped me out a lot so far, and I thank you for your prayers, especially Sister Sujata is not here today, she messaged with me most every day with the message, so I praise her. But um, I suppose I expected to be uh, blessed in the sense that I would that I'll keep this day, and you know, that's not what it is at all. It's um, if you look at all the apostles through the Bible, they all went through hardships and suffering, and you know, that's what serving God is. You know, um, what we what Brother Luke was saying, what we suffer here now is um, it's nothing in compared to the rest of your life. You know what I mean? And it was. It was very hard for me because, um, and there was actually a lesson two weeks ago about Jeremiah and how he was a cupbearer, humbled down to building a wall. And so, um, but he he said, he reminded himself that it was a great work. And you know, that's what really I had to remind myself of, that I was doing a great work here. And so the guy that I was working for, um, he would often ask me about my faith a lot. And so... That was the really only thing that really kept me going, was able to share with him that um, about the faith, and because he was raised Catholic, and so he had a lot of questions, but, um, you know, that was really why I was here, I thought, uh, knowing that, uh, that I needed to maybe be there for, for him to give him some truths, and um, also it was a great lesson for me as well, because... He was treating his workers very poorly, and so it really took me to speak up for them and myself, saying that, you know, you're working us like slaves pretty much, like over 50 hours a week for small amounts of money. And so that really stuck with him. And then um, he really thought about that afterwards. Um, and then he asked me, I, sh I shared a video with him, and uh, he didn't really watch it until after I, after I had spoken up. About, um, what he was doing and so praise the Lord for that experience but um, there I was no job I quit my job actually so um, but praise the Lord now that uh, he's given me a new job um, and uh, I moved out I was living in this house as well so I was like I was like married to this guy pretty much as soon as I got here I was spending 24 hours a day with him so I moved out of this house praise the Lord um, 
I was able to find accommodation as well. And so, um, yeah, I suppose it was very hard for me um, not knowing why I was here. But going back even further, I had to remind myself um, really what really cemented my faith as well is that when I was just starting to read the Bible, my uncle, his son, was going through a tough time as well in Melbourne is where, where they lived. And so um, he was actually going going through, he's only 16 at the time, 17 now. But at the time he was starting to get into drugs, uh, a bit of marijuana. And so um, my uncle being a, uh, he's actually a principal at a Seventh-day Adventist school in uh, Melbourne. So for him to have his son doing drugs and, um, uh, you know, getting up to a bit of mischief was, I suppose, a bad look. And so he actually had to expel his son from the school. And so he came to live with us in New Zealand. And so he said to his son, um, basically, it's, uh, it's your choice now. Like, you don't, have to, uh, you don't have to go to church or worship God if you don't want to. And so um, really it was God preparing me. For, for his son because uh, he was he came to live with us in our house and so um, there was one Sabbath and um, I just said I just said to him Oz oh, is that us are we going to Sabbath are we going to church today bro and he's like uh, yeah yeah we can go like he was kind of on the fence and so it was really God working his way through me to bring his son back into um, back into God's life. And so I praise the Lord for that, really, because he said to me that, like, he was not prepared to go to church if I hadn't have asked him to go to church or to keep going. And so it was really God preparing me for him, for uh, his servant, my uncle. So that's pretty much my journey so far. And just I praise you all for your prayers. And thank you.